What's up? I'm here with the 23 BMW S1000RR, and today we're going to be installing the IET relocation kit and the flapper delete kit. Now, the flapper delete kit isn't required, but it is something I suggest for the hardcore racers. For everyone else, we can open the flappers through software only. So let's go ahead and get started here on the install. First thing you're going to do here is remove the top cover, which is three bolts, T25. A T25 is this star looking tool right here. And uh, if you have a BMW, you're probably gonna need this. So just go ahead and get a set if you have a BMW at all. That's primarily what they use. Just remove all of these and pull off the top cover. The top cover, both hands here, pulls up. Right there. We got some Velcro on the inside here. And that's what's uh, get what, that's what's causing the hang up here when you're pulling it off. But don't be discouraged; it pulls right off. Next, we'll remove the rear seat, which is another T25 right in the center. That comes off. Okay, now it's time to remove the side fairing. There's a bolt here, and there's a bolt here. You remove both of them, but hold the fairing while you remove them. You also want to push down here, depending on this is a carbon fiber fairing. So um, there's a piece here that clips in. So you want to push down this. Pull up here and then slide forward and all of this should come right out. Okay, now to pull the tank and to pull that we have a 13 inch nut right here, which I already kind of loosened up, 13, and the washer. Remove that for both sides and you also have a 10 millimeter back here, which I already loosened up. Probably did, there we go. So 10 millimeter back here and 13 millimeters the sides. Pull all those and the tank will be loose as you can see. There's a bolt right up here in front we're going to remove. It's another T25. This is for hold the ECU in. And that pulls right out with a washer. Now the tank should be easy to remove. So remove this ECU a little bit forward, right there. Remove the vent hoses, one right here and one on the other side. And the whole tank will pick up. And I, I like to lay it on that side like this. Out like that and it actually holds itself if you get in the right position if you need to have someone hold it have someone hold it we just need to get underneath here once you're down in here it's pretty easy you just got to remove the feed which will be a couple drops of fuel that's fine and we got to remove the electronics here which i just use a flathead jam the connector and pull them out it's only those two and then the tank will move right on the bike just like that all right now that we have this exposed we have the air box here which we've got to remove um, we got to remove actually the whole front section here. So all these electronics have to come out. Now, don't be worried. This is super easy. This is not scary whatsoever. Um, first thing you'll have to do here is remove this tab. You got to push both sides of this and pull this out. This you can pull out like that and move it over here. Out of the way. And then this will pull out once you remove that. Then you want to go over here and remove this one. Purge valve, I believe. Then you want to... Um, let me see, after we remove all that stuff, this gets freer. We have the, that's right there for the stacks. All right, that one's removed. The IET is right here. Let's go ahead and remove that. All right, that's good too. Basically, we're trying to free up this harness as much as possible. We have a purge valve, or sorry, part of the EVAP system over here. It's a plug like that, looks just like the injectors. So now that we have this kind of pulling out like that, that looks good. Let's pull all the injectors as well. Injectors are super easy. I just kind of lift up the Phillips there. And they kind of come out, hopefully. There's one, two, three, and four. There, now we have most of this stuff off. We're going to start unscrewing the actual harness itself. There's black bolts. I'll show you guys here. Now there's six black bolts are removed here. Um, they're all T20s. That's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we'll remove all of these. Once you get that removed, there's a zip tie on this side for the wiring harness and you remove it. Make sure you're not to cut the wiring harness, of course. Now that all the bolts are out and that line is cut, so the zip tie is cut, you can move this and move it freely. Make sure you do it very carefully because we're dealing with the wiring harness here. You can just peel it right back like that. Something to note here, this, by the way, this is your fuel line right here, okay? There's a, there's a spot here, the white line needs to go right here with this tray, 
and that goes in like that when you reinstall everything. Just make sure when you install it, that sits back in there because if it's kinked up, you're not gonna be getting any fuel to your motorcycle and well, it will cause stalling or it won't start anymore. All right, now we can get to the fuel rail here. This is for the shower head injectors up top here. And it's the same as the T20, same like the black bolts you just removed. Now that that's gone, let's go ahead and remove these breather lines. Remember where these go. I just keep all the upper ones at one spot and all the lower ones at another spot. And pull this up, just like that. And now we can get to the rest of the bike here. You also remove this line. Right up just like that, pulls out of the airbox. And now we'll start actually detaching the airbox itself from the motorcycle. Now remove the top bolt right here from each side of the airbox, the T30. It's getting more. It pulls right up with a little washer like that. Also, there's gonna be a little metal piece here that's kind of a, a gasket that goes between the actual frame itself and the plastic of the airbox. Pull that out too. Go ahead and remove this valve from the side, just kind of pull it back little by little. It comes right out, leave that hanging. Now it's time to disconnect or unbolt the bottom of the airbox and T40 on both sides. Just unscrew that and remove both of the bolts. All right, now there's a breather line down in here, right there that connects to the bottom of the airbox. Hope you guys can see this. Um, I use a pair of pliers. Here we go. So all you gotta do really is kind of use the pliers in there and I kind of try to twist it because it's a weird kind of clamp. It is reusable, um, but it is odd. And also I'd recommend move that out of the way and have a towel handy. Reason being is because when this usually comes out, the airbox comes out, it's usually kind of oily. Go ahead, pull it out just fine. You gotta push this. There we go. So let's clean off the oil and move on to the next step. Now that you got that off, uh, you wanna go under here. This is how you remove the flat box. Those are both T40. T30, <laughs> those are both T30 and this, uh, this will all pull out and there'll be a, a connector at the bottom. So just make sure not to pull it out too hard. All right, now you got those bolts out. This should pull right out. There are two tabs you gotta push into, one on each side of the uh, inlet. And you just kind of push them until it starts to give on one side and then it'll give on the other side. Of course you push back into the tabs or also reinstall the box. You see at the bottom there, like I said, it's connected. Here's for the flapper motor right here. Move that right there. Typically what I do, typically what I do here is I'll take this and zip tie it out of the way. If you're using the flapper kit, if you're not, of course you wanna plug it back in. All right, now what I've done here is, see this side, how that black piece is on there? I've actually moved this up. You can use a, uh, a flathead, put it in, press that in between there, and this will, these two tabs will pop up. That's an OEM harness um, clamp, basically. And I've taken the IET, this is the IET right here, and I've moved it through, right and through here. And you can see it hanging out right there now. So this is the easiest way to route this. And you can see, I'm gonna push this down. There you go, now it's down in there and clipped. Boom. And then you can just run it down the harness like this. I'm gonna run a few zip ties in it. And I just plugged it to the OEM or the OE location right there. Um, for the harness. Uh, yes, I'm aware I'm wearing black gloves now. You sh I should have wearing these the whole time. Um, <laughs> you're dealing with oil. This is a brand new bike, so I didn't want to mess with it. Another note here, I put a light right there, but let me move this so you guys can actually see. Um, the other note here is when you actually do get the bike like this, do not do something like this. This is the worst thing you can do to your bike right there. And you go, oh, look how cool the inside of the bike is and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, if you do that, you have to do a whole GS relearn on the whole thing. So I do not recommend you doing that. So I'll have to do a whole GS relearn, but I just wanted to show you guys not to do that. So as for you uh, guys that have the single R or the XR, what you wanna do here, I'm gonna remove the whole front end of this bike to do the IET kit. Um, but now I'm gonna show the flapper delete part, but I wanted to show you guys specifically because I don't have this bike in front of me. You just wanna move the IET as far forward as possible. And I've seen some people do some very odd things. I've seen them just kind of lay it here, tape it to something. You can do that if you'd like. Um, I don't recommend it because I like a really clean look. 
Uh, you can even put it right here if you want, but as long as the uh, as when you move the forks, it's not hitting it, um, you'll be okay. I'm gonna actually remove everything here and make this look nice and sweet, but I don't have an XR or an R here. So like I said, move it as far forward as possible in the inlet, that's the best you can do. Just poke it in there, just make sure it's not um, hitting anything or anything's not hitting it, and you should be good to go there. All right, now I'm gonna do the flapper delete kit here. If you're not gonna do the flapper delete kit, go ahead and skip forward. I'll put the time at the bottom of the video here to skip forward too, if you're just looking for the IET and removal of the front end of the S1000RR. If you are doing the flapper kit, let me go ahead and get started here. It's T25, three top bolts here. That pulls right out, the motor comes right out. Now you see, got some motor stuff right here. Let me show you guys. This is what we're basically trying to remove there is these two flappers. And you can see, we command it open. That's what we do. We command them open through the software. They can be open 100% of the time. Stock, these things only open up at 6,000 RPM. So you can see how it's kind of gasping for breath right there. So 6,000 RPM, those open up. Now, what we're gonna do is remove these flappers all together to get rid of this because even, even though it's open, it's maybe causing a little bit of turbulence and blocking a hair of air. It's for the razors and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get this out of here. I just get a flathead, pop these right out. There we go. Nothing's blocking it no more. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna add the flap or delete stuff, which means we'll keep one bolt from the original three bolts that we had at the top here. This, oops, right at the top. It is a very, very snug fit, so I recommend you kind of moving it back and forth like this. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but that'll go right here. And these three, one will go, where is it? Right here, the big plug, right there. Push it in very good, make sure it's nice, nice and even. And right here, push this in very good, and push this one in good. Now the whole thing is blocked off. Just make sure you go ahead and push them in, which I'll do right now. All right, now that is perfect. Got nice and flush in here. You can tell because on the inside it'll be pretty much flush as well. Uh, I got these flush too. Now you can push as much as you want. Don't push too hard. This thing, rubber thing, will come out on both sides and on here. So it's kind of hard to get in there with your fingers, especially if you have small hands. I use a very small rubber mallet and I'm very careful when I drive it in there. This one, I push side to side, front to back, like this, a lot, and it'll eventually pop in. I know it's a very pretty billet piece and it's gonna sit like this in the bike, you'll never see it, but attention to detail, that's everything. So this is now done. Now we can go back in the bike. Once you're done with the inlet, you can move on over to the air box and you can move the IET, just like that. Boom, pops right out, and you can put the plug in, provided by the VT motor kit. Now you can go ahead and put the air box back in the bike. Put the inlet back in the bike, assemble her up just the way you took her apart, and she is good. We can move on to the next part, which is putting the rest of the IET kit in. All right, let's get going in the front of the bike here. We're gonna have to remove this, 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 and this bolt for the windscreen. They're all T25. The bottom ones here have washers. Make sure to keep the washers, which I just dropped. Make sure to keep the washers with the bottom ones. The washer ones do not go to the top, they go to the bottom. Remember that. Now this just pulls out from the bottom here. And then it's from the top like that. Now for the 21 plus bikes, well actually all of them, you just pull from the top here. And the bottom has a fastener that kind of clips in. Um, if you have a 20 bike, this will be a clip. But they, from 21 on, they move to this pole design that goes into here. Now that we've got access to this front section here, we're gonna be removing the turn signals. If you don't have turn signals, this obviously doesn't apply to you, but you have to take this stuff off anyway, so might as well do it. The stock turn signals are a 10 millimeter, just two bolts. Just get those out both sides. Once you get them out, this whole thing will slide out with the turn signal. All right, so now that you've gotten all that stuff off, you have to go under the bike here, and there's a couple bolts, one each side actually. Um, right, right where my finger's at, see right there? One on that side, one on the other side, and that will remove the center of this lip so we can get to these bolts right here. Now that we've got both those out, you can see, this pulls out just like that and comes out. Now that the center lip thing is gone here, we're gonna go under here and get these, one on each side. 
That's also a T20, remove both of those. Now that that's off, these are pretty easy. Don't be scared, you just kind of pull, pull, and it pulls out. A few fasteners here, you can see they all just pull out. Now we're gonna go back to the T25 and remove these two bolts in the center. One, two. Now this is completely detached. We can actually remove it here. I removed the side pieces on this because a lot of people just take the whole front end off with the cane pieces, but this will be connected here. Because I have carbon, there's no connection here, but the plastic pieces do connect here. There's a tab here that you can, I don't know, break or whatever. So I'm just doing it the safe way. Now we have to get the combi out here, which is the screen. And there's three tabs we gotta pull out of here, or clips, or C-clips. One, two, and three. Be very careful when you pull these out. I recommend um, some pliers, uh, side pliers. I don't know how to exactly call them. I'll show you what it looks like. So this is uh, the pliers I use right here to rip out. So you can see right there, I go right there. And just be very sure, because if you drop this down in there, you're not gonna have a good day. Now that you've removed the clips here, the combi's free to move out, but we gotta remove the wiring harness from the combi. So it's a clip on both sides. Press it, pull it out, move it out of the way. And now the combi is free to remove from the bike. Be careful when you're removing it. Don't hit anything because it is kind of expensive. All right, I'm trying to get you guys a good angle here because now it's time to drill the hole. And I'm using, uh, to start with here, a 3 eighths, and I work my way to a half. The reason why I do that is uh, this is really thin plastic and that half, when it grabs, it may just rip out a whole bunch of plastic. So I'm trying to start small and work my way up. Um, I use this side and I usually don't stand here. I usually where the camera is, so this might be interesting. All right, here we go. I will say I probably, I usually use a towel down in there too. And I put a towel right in here to kind of soak up any debris that falls in there. Um, but right now I'm not because uh, I mean, I can just scoop it out with my hands, not a big deal. All right, now I'm to my half inch here. I'm just gonna try to get that in there. There we go. The hole looks nice and symmetrical. Clear out the debris and then set in your IET. This is your IET, by the way. This is a stock IET that goes in the top of the air box. This is what's gonna settle in that hole. All right, now we got the IET in there and it doesn't need to be the tightest thing on the planet. It just kind of needs to settle in there and um, that's pretty much it. As long as it pops into the hole and uh, it's not like wriggling too much. See like this is wriggling a little bit, but it's perfectly fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and route the line. All right, so I wanted to show you guys how exactly I routed everything here. So we've got the IET sitting right here. This is the IET line that we ran through the factory wiring harness, if you remember. And I ran it under everything here. Let me move this out of the way. On this side of the bike, let me see if I can get a good. So right in there, you can see I ran it through here. I ran a zip tie between this OEM line here and that to kind of uh, snug it up between the two and then ran it under here and you can see it run through here. Then it goes out through the nose of the bike here by the horn under this wiring and back into the IET. And there's your IET right there. Um, I know that doesn't sound the simplest, but that's the easiest way I could figure to do it. And, uh, still be easy for a customer to do or still be re realistic for a customer to do and we move everything here nothing gets hit it misses everything that's that's the main goal here is that nothing gets hit we want to uh to avoid everything from colliding um sure you could take the whole front nose off take everything out from here and run this all through and just do it nice and clean you could do it that way if you're that ocd that's awesome i'm just trying to do it the way realistically most customers will do it I'll leave it this way and make sure there's no issues. Now that we've finished the IET and the flapper, this bike is now complete. Um, now you can go ahead and get the flash from BT Moto, flash the bike, and you're all set. Now you have the ambient intake temps right there instead of the crazy temps from the motor. And um, you can look at my IET comparison video, which uh, I can put a link in the description for you guys. So you can see exactly why we do the IET kit and why it's important to not just do the flapper, but also the IET. They have to work in conjunction or it's not proper. Uh, you won't see the actual benefits from it if you don't do it that way. And that's that guys.